Hello guys, hello replay viewers. Thanks so much for being here this Friday night. I appreciate it. Oh, if you're a replay viewer, you might be here on Saturday. Thanks for being here. And thank you catch viewers for being here as well. I sure do appreciate you watching my videos. Uh, if you wanna watch live, download the Periscope app and follow me at Penguin and Fish, all one word. I am here every night except for the last two nights i took a little break off um, i'm here every night at 9 30 p.m central so thanks guys i see you popping in i'm gonna flip you around hey hello everyone it's so nice to see you guys again uh thanks for popping in i was out uh Wednesday and Thursday this week, so two days. I haven't uh, haven't seen you guys, so it's really nice to see you all jumping in again. Happy Friday! Hope you're all doing well. Uh, we are going to finish this block. It's block 13 by Corey Yoder. Uh, we're we're working on the Splendid Sampler. You can find out more information at thesplendidsampler.com. It's a year long quilt along. Uh, we're on block. We're on block 14, but I'm deciding to finish 13 before starting before starting 14. So we'll start 14 tomorrow. I'm hoping uh, we'll get done with this tonight, pending, you know, everything goes smoothly. And <laughs> that's what we're gonna hope for. Oh, I'm so happy <laughs> to see all you guys. It's, it, it was, a, I had a fun time, and, and I'll talk about that in a little bit here. Um, it was weird having two days off, though. I don't know, and I missed you guys. <laughs> So if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we create lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer as well. And I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, except for the last two nights. <laughs> I don't take many breaks and, and it was weird. Uh, but we had, a, we had a friend in town, my brother's girlfriend actually, and uh, we hung out with her for a little bit and that was that was pretty fun and I'll tell you guys what we did uh, but I'm gonna flip you around let me know what you're working on tonight oh happy to have a good feed today oh yeah if you guys um, have a poor feed just jump out and jump back in all right flipping you around okay so all we have to do yet guys oh you got my book today oh I hope you like it <laughs> let me know um let me know what you make from it I'd love to, um, I'd love to see Sharon. All right. So, <clears throat> ooh, sorry guys. I'm like freezing here today. It, it got, it dropped, uh, it, it looked so beautiful outside today. Like it was bright and sunny, but man, it was chilly and I'm cold right now. My fingers are freezing. I'm just enjoying the fact that you don't have to work the weekend. Oh, and Thea, that's awesome. All right. So all we have to do is sew on these little white bits and then we have these, um, a little border on the outside and the triangles and all this outside border we're going to do in uh, this crazy fun color that's also it's this little bit so we're kind of repeating repeating some of this in the outside again so we are on this page oh uh, this is where i was messing up last night or two or uh, not like three nights ago jeez um so we are sewing the one inch by four and a half inch ones to the sides and then we're sewing um, a one inch by five and a half inch to the top and bottom and then uh, then we have to cut out more fabric so we didn't we didn't cut this out last time uh, so we're gonna sew and then cut so I'm gonna zip us over this way and we will just get started I want to get this block done right So the next block uh, is the one with those cute little seagulls on, and it's all mach or it's a uh, it's all applique. Um, so that will be another adventure in applique. Haven't started the seagull applique. Yeah, I I'm I haven't picked fabrics or anything for it yet. So um, I figured oh we'll just do that tomorrow. What where are these? Okay, these are all these are both pressed in. The seam allowances are so thick on this one now. Let's see. And my, um, I'm a little bit like by like a 32nd of an inch, maybe too big on my block. So I'm kind of keeping that in mind. I'm going to be a little less scant than usual, I think. So this is, um, side one. 
Are you, you know, I don't know. Am I going to do needle turn or not is, is the question. And my heart kind of wants to do needle turn. <laughs> but the fact that there's three of them kind of scare me to do that much needle turn. And I kind of want to catch up. Like I want to, I kind of want to get back to uh, my block, block 11. Um, because we're not done with the embroidery on that, and we have a long ways to go. So there was, you're, you are going to do needle turn. You know, I do want to do a lot more needle turn in this process. I'm just not sure I'm going to do it for, um, I need a scissors. I'm not sure I'm going to do it for this next, next one. Uh, the birds are small. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about that too, Diane, just because um, they're just so small. So I think... I saw some cute ones and, you know, I'm trying to do different things with my uh, applique this whole entire time because there's so many different ways to do applique. So I'm kind of thinking, and I saw someone else do this on the Facebook block. Um, they did, uh, you know, like how we did last time with the flowers on block four where we had that uh, um, double-sided iron-on adhesive. Um, I'm thinking of using that again, but then I think I might blanket stitch around the outside. So we'll still get a lot of that handwork because last time we did machine stitched around it. I think um I think I might blanket stitch around them. Um, then it'll be like half iron on and half, or the other part of the process will be the stitching. Um, so it won't take as long as needle turn, but it'll still have that nice handwork thing. And we haven't done it yet. Uh, we haven't done like the blanket stitch around around our little objects. So I think I think that's my plan and. Uh, uh, I, the one that I saw online on on Facebook, I think they used a, used variegated thread too, and I thought that would be really fun to use um, another another variegated thread to to uh, blanket stitch around. So that's currently my plan. Um, <laughs> that could change by tomorrow when we when we uh, start it, but I think that is that's my plan. And mostly it's because I want to get it done faster so I can go back to block 11, really. It'd be nice to get farther on that embroidery because we, we do have several days left of embroidery on, on block 11. I did a machine blanket stitch. See, well, that would be lovely. However, my, my, uh, this, this guy does not have a blanket stitch. It has like all those normal, um, well, they're not really normal to me because I never use them, but they have all the sewing type stitches. So like the overcast thing and zigzags and, and stuff if you're making garments, right? Uh, but it doesn't have, you know, cute, fancy stitches. So I won't be doing that uh, on, on this machine at least. So I think we're going to do it by hand, which, you know, is fun. I like all the imaginative backgrounds. That, oh yeah, people are doing so many fun backgrounds. That is for sure. Um, I like the ones that look like sunsets that people are doing. I'm kind of thinking I might do a bright color like this and then a really dark gulls, seagulls on it uh, because then it'll be like a bright, you know, sunset and they're all silhouetted in the sky. I think that that's kind of fun. Um... The other way I could do it is make like a morning type sky. So maybe a, like a really light blue and maybe like almost pink seagulls. But I don't know if I have anything that will kind of work for that. So I don't know. I'm going to be looking at that uh, tomorrow afternoon, picking, picking colors. Oh, you got cloud fabric in your stash. Now that's, that's, um, that's good planning. <laughs> All right, we got part, part of our little border on here. Let me scooch down a little bit. Oh, I could actually just aim you up. I keep forgetting that I can aim you guys up. All right. Not planned. <laughs> it just came in handy, right? Right. Is it, um, do you pronounce your name Pox or Pax? I'm not, I'm not positive, but I want to get it right. Oh, you know what, guys? I completely forgot that we had a, oh, Ax, like Pax. Okay, so Pax. All right, awesome. <laughs> I will get that. I forgot that we have to pay attention to the corners on that sewing, so I just clipped off my corners. So that's a good way to start the day, huh? <laughs> uh, oh, well. So this one is 
not clipped. This one's clipped. This one's clipped. This one's clipped. So we'll watch that um, when I do when I do these ones. I think I might. It might be better. Yeah, no one will notice. It might be better for me to sew this way because then I can see my little my little points there. Welcome to your life. I'm funny. Like that just didn't even occur to me. But we're all right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry. Let's let's add these other little bits on top. All right. So scooch back here. Maybe I should just clip them all and and not worry about it. How, how about that? I think I am gonna I'm gonna just flip it around so I can at least see. I mean, normally it's nice to have this. Uh, flat layer on top, not all these crazy seam allowances. Um, this is a little more difficult to manage, but I think I'm going to do it anyway just so I can see those little bits there. All right, I think we're I think we're good right there. This is where my uh, stiletto will come in handy. Keep these keep these little seam allowances down. There, see, now I can see. Oh, you guys probably can't see. Let me click. I don't know. Can I zoom in? Maybe. Zoop. All right. Like, right. Oh, there. Now you can kind of see right here where the seams cross. I want to hit that point. Or actually, I want to be like a hair scanned at that point. So that's what I couldn't see on the last time. <laughs> the last, uh, the last time around. Let me zoom you back. All right. I think we're, I think we're back to normal there now. So I'm going to aim for that point. Right there. Okay, so I'm gonna just adjust my fabric there, and now I'm gonna aim for this point here. Do you have a quarter inch foot? Um, I am not using one right now. It's on my list to check, to check to see if I have a quarter inch foot. I gotta pull out all this machine's um, gadgets. Uh, I have it somewhere. I think it's actually within um, five feet of me, maybe, but, um, I keep forgetting to check, so maybe I'll, I'll check that tomorrow night, before tomorrow night, even though we don't need one for tomorrow, but I'll see if it's available, and, uh, then I'd like to give that a try, too, just because I'm using a walking foot right now, and that might not be the best thing to use for, for these blocks, so I definitely want to, I want to give it a, give it a test. It's on our list of things to learn and things to try, so I definitely want to do that. But yeah, I totally always forget. All right, let's see if we did. I think I, I think it actually is on my literal list. Yeah, presser, <laughs> presser feed, check them out. Quarter inch, question mark? <laughs> so I actually do have a Janelle on there. I just have to, it will make a difference. Okay, I'm gonna have to look. All right, so points are much better. <laughs> Here's, um, <clears throat> still not perfect, but much closer closer than uh than how I clipped them here because I was aiming at, at those seams yeah so I will look for that quarter inch quarter incher I'm thinking it's the one that I used to use all the time before I got a walking foot <laughs> so I'm gonna have to check that check that out all right let's line this up again I'm thinking you'll enlarge the gulls before tomorrow. Oh, that'll be interesting. Do you want them? How big do you want them? All right, I think I think we're just gonna do what this is right here. There we go. All right, stiletto. Aiming for that point again. You know, it would have helped if I would have trimmed this block beforehand too, but we decided meh on that. Just bigger for trying. Oh, for doing the needle turn. Oh, that makes sense. I have an aversion to gulls. Maybe I'll change it to sparrows. There you go. Melanie, that, that's a good idea. Yeah, they could be easily sparrows. You could just, um, sparrows have those little pointed tips. Like that little, uh, they have, um, I wonder if I have a pencil. They have those tails that go like, I think the gull's tails are like this right now. You could just add like pointed tips like that to the tail, you know, and then the wings or whatever. Then I think it'd be more like a, more like a sparrow. All 
All right, where's my little line here? I think right there. You made eagles. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the DC eaglets. Oh, for fun. Yeah, it's really kind of fun to just see what people do and how people embrace the black and stuff. I, I, it's just been so exciting to see everything. What's the circle idea? I, I missed that. Oops. There we go. This is uh, one of those scissors I got on eBay and it barely cuts it all. <laughs> but isn't it cute? I like it. It's, it's got some funny pattern. It's got a lot of like little rust. I, I need to find... Uh, there's got to be a you know, antique scissors repair, you know, something place that exists. I have a few that I'd like to send there. Oh, my gulls, oh, go in a circle. Oh, that's kind of interesting. They'd be like circus gulls. <laughs> all right. Don't need this guy anymore for a little while because we got to do all this cutting and stuff still. So let's get back over here. Let's press this out and uh, I don't know, should we measure and trim it? We, we maybe should. I don't know. Or we can just cut and stick stuff on. <laughs> that's always, that's my usual thing. We were so exact with block number 12 that I'm kind of like, man. <laughs> Let's just not be exact for this one. But, you know, then we get our crazy wonky blocks. The accuracy is definitely something I, I want to work on through this, uh, yeah, it's Friday, go crazy, uh, that I want to work on through this Splendid Sampler uh, whole project, just because, you know, I am just kind of stick it on and sew it on and don't worry about it too much. Oh, look at it with the white frame. That's so cool. See, this is like the thing where you don't, you can place things next to each other, but until there's actually a sewn seam, you just don't know what it's going to look like and how fun. I like it. So we are, we are okay with our tips are up there. This one, um, this one we clipped a little and this one looks, that one looks pretty dang perfect, that one. Um, and then our bottom ones clip this a little, but who cares? So there we are. That is the center of our block. Accuracy is your challenge. Yeah, that, if you watch my uh, my videos for for block 12, which is the one before this, you can tell, I mean, like, we really worked hard and it took a long time. We, we really, I, I was a lot quieter too because I was concentrating so much. All right, on to this guy. So we got to cut again. We took this just as a, just a, as a recap, we took this block in sections. Like I didn't cut everything all at once. I uh, um, I only cut the center because I was way too overwhelmed with everything. I think I actually only cut this center um, and then a couple of these other things and then cut the rest of it and then cut these and then we ran out of time and now now we'll cut we'll cut this. It was just too much. I had to divide. It's such an intricate block that I had to divide it in into smaller chunks. I worked hard and still didn't fit it. Oh no. Okay. So this is the G fabric now, um, from G. So we need two one inch by five and a half inch rectangles and two one inch by six and a half inch rectangles and then four squares that are two and a half by two and a half. Okay. So let's do the thing where we just do one long strip and then trim it down. So this would, we'd have it at like an 11 inch strip and this we'd have at least a 13 inch strip. Okay, we're starting there. So let's open this up. I think I'm gonna spray some of that soak starch on it just cause it smells so nice. Um, and then we'll press it a little bit. So it looks like, oh, I wonder, we got kind of, oh wait, I thought this was a shorter edge, but I just had it unfolded yet. So this is still a pretty good size fat quarter. So I think this is the 18 inch edge. So we might be able to get, maybe we should cut the, the uh, squares out of it first because we need um, four two and a half by two and a half inch squares. So let's just call that, if we cut that five inches by two and a half, would we have enough for the 13? So five and 13 is 18. So that would be perfect for like an 18 inch edge like this. 
maybe I'm doing too much math for the evening. Oh, this isn't quite 18 inches though. It's um, it's it's 17. So we're gonna skip that. That's 17 this way. How much is it this way? You know what? We might just have scraps. I've been collecting all the scraps. This actually, this block is mostly scraps. Okay, this is 17 this way. So we got a 17 inch square right now. Um, we're gonna just, I'm gonna just cut two one inch deals out of it and then I'll have a bunch of one inch strips that are long that I, that I won't need, but it'll be easier. Oh, you think robins are nesting in your birdhouse? Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, we've um we've been seeing the robins around lately and it's just been they're just so fun. It's that's spring. And and you know what I love? I love the um the black capped chickadees when they they chirp cuz they have like the really really musical uh chirps and and the red-winged blackbirds, they they're really musical too. So those those two are kind of my favorite. I actually want like a million tattoos of them. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be fun. Poor Robins by Monday. It'll be 20s again. Oh no. Yeah, the chickadees are just, they just, it's a whole language and they're just chit-chatting and it's so musical and just a bunch of different things versus some birds that just have like one little tweet or whatever. But I always love seeing the black hat chickadees flitter about and I don't know, they're my favorite I think. Okay, I do actually really love cardinals though too, so there are those. Alrighty, let's grab the big ruler. I am going to, uh, you're, you guys probably won't be able to see it all, but I'm going to just get a nice edge here first, and then I'm going to cut two long one inch strips. This is taking a very long time to load. You have mountain chickadees. Oh, I'm, I don't know what those are. I think I just lost the cap for for the the soak spray, so I'm gonna have to dig around on the floor when we're done here. Oh, you got your cardinals in the mail! Oh, cool! That's awesome to hear. I'm glad they made it made it there. Okay, Janelle, yay! Yeah, I drew a little I drew a little cardinal on your package for my my attempt at a cardinal. <laughs> All right, here we go, one inch. Oh, that's cool, <laughs> thanks Janelle. I draw on all my packages, FYI people. <laughs> that's like my favorite part of um, fulfilling the orders. Oh, you got a lion, awesome. Yeah, I love, uh, I, you know, I really do love drawing that lion. He's just, um, I feel like I, you know, I draw him the same every time, but I feel like his personality is different each time. It just makes me happy. All right, here's a one inch. Let's check. Yep, it was one inch. Almost didn't check. Check my measurement, and that freaks me out. Okay. Concentrating. This is quite a long strip for a one inch strip. Um, to cut. I thought the ruler really moving. I think it might have moved just a hair, but I'm going to not worry about it. Okay, let's do one more. We're going to have a ton of excess, but I'm deciding not to care. We'll use the um, we'll use the excess later in, in the Splendid Sampler. Normally I, I would care. I wouldn't want to waste all that fabric, but I don't think we are going to waste it. I think we'll use it for something else. Okay, butt that up against there. All right, gotta be quiet again for cutting. All right, so these grips have really been working well still. They're um, these little, there you can kind of see in the light, these little rubber circles, and then the insides of these circles are little dots. Yes, so here's, um, you can kind of see the little dot. Um, that's really been helpful for me uh, for my my cutting because it just kind of grips. It doesn't move around at all, um, and I'm way more confident in my cutting now now from that. All right, let's get a. You know what? I got I got this kind of little cut area here. 
Oh, I didn't spray this down though over here. We'll use this corner. All right, <laughs> now that I've turned this around eight times. All right, so now we need our four, four, <laughs> I love how we're all quiet when you cut, I'm holding breath, right? So four squares that are two and a half inches. So can we get this all in one strip? So what would that be like? It'd be eight, nine, 10, does that sound right? 10 inches? I think so. All right, so I need at least a 10 inch strip that I'll cross cut. So I got a bunch of garbage here. So maybe, well, let's see how, how wide are we now? Okay, we're 15 inches. Um, I think I'm gonna just trim it off of this side. It looks like I'll have to, I'm gonna press this though. Here are these little one inch, look how cute these are as one inch strips, these, um, these, this fabric, I like it. All right, so I'm gonna spray this side and press it quick. Then we're gonna sew, I wanna sew so I can get this all done tonight, right? Yeah, I think we're gonna do that blanket stitch around the birds, we haven't done that yet. So that's, that's kinda, I wanna experiment with all different ways of the applique during this process too, so. I think blanket stitch around the little birds will be just fine. Oops, sorry guys. I hit the tripod. So we went bowling last night, <laughs> which I haven't done uh, in a long time. We have this really good, uh, it's like totally divey, but it's like divey with really good food. Um, so it's, it's the Bryant Lake Bowl. I don't know if you guys, if you're in the Minneapolis area, if you, um, if you've heard of it, but it's like an old established place. It's been there forever. Um, but the Bryant Lake Bowl, um, they have great food. So we went there, we actually saw a play last night. And then when, when we were done, we picked up, uh, my brother's girlfriend cause she had a meeting in the evening. Um, and then went to Bryant Lake Bowl and had dinner. I had like a Reuben that was so good. They do all the corned beef um, in house for the Reuben. That's what's in the Reuben, right? Yeah. And it was just delicious. And then we went bowling after and it's old school bowling. So it has um, in the same place where the restaurant is, it's uh, and this whole restaurant's like a divey bar looking look and feel. Um, but uh, so the, the the bowling alley is in the same thing and it and it's way old school. I think there's maybe just six lanes and uh, you have to, there's no monitors or anything like that. You have to do the math yourself. And, and we were teaching um, my brother's girlfriend how to do the math and stuff on it uh, just cause she hasn't really played too much before. And my husband was freaking out because he, that was like the one F he got was in gym class um, on the bowling test. So he has like this paranoia of adding up all the things on, <laughs> on the little card. Uh, so it was actually kind of cute. Uh, but yeah, it was fun. And we had to pick out our own shoes. There's no one manning it or anything. And it was just a lot of fun. But the play that we went to, it was, it was a one man show. Uh, my husband does some film stuff and the actor who was doing the one man show, uh, it was one of the actors that, that John, my husband has worked with before. So we're like, okay, let's go check this thing out. And it was about, oh, what was it even called? Oh, it's called, um, oh, something in cellar. Oh, buyer in cellar, maybe? buyer and seller, but seller is spelt like a, like a wine cellar, like a basement. And so apparently Barbara Streisand wrote this book about her basement and her basement has, um, sorry, I'm like trying to get rulers at the same time. Her basement, she just didn't want to store her stuff like a normal person in a basement. She wanted to make a whole old timey mall city street in her basement. So like for all her dolls, she has the doll shop and for all her costumes from all her movies and stuff that she kept, she has the costume shop and the whole, so that there's this, that, that book actually exists. And so the premise of this play was what if Barbara 
wanted, um, hired someone to work in the shops in the basement as if they were real. <laughs> It's just her stuff, but like, what if she hired a guy to be like the sales manager of, of these shops? So it's about this guy who gets hired for it and, uh, you know, and he's like freaking out because it's Barbara and, and all that. And uh, it's just him and Barbara interacting and, it, but it's all this one man show and everything still, it was really funny. Uh, I laughed so many times. So if you're in the if you're in the Minneapolis area, I totally recommend it. It's um, just going on for the month of April, I think. But such a cute premise of a story. I mean, <laughs> literally though, I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, the writer for this found this book and just had this weird idea. Like, what if does Barbara have someone manning these shops? Uh, it's just it was just so cute. I liked it. Anyway, so after that, we we uh, went bowling and ate Rubens and drank beer. It was awesome. <laughs> and we got to actually hang out with uh, my brother's girlfriend a little bit more. I, we had only met her one other time, uh, and she needed a place to stay in town, so we we uh, she stayed here, and it was fun to actually get to know her a little bit more. That was fun. But now I'm back here with you guys, which is nice too. I missed all of you. <laughs> and then on Wednesday, we went to our favorite, uh, favorite pizza shop in town. So if you're in the area, you should go to Pizzeria Lola. That is the best. And that was fun. We were there till like midnight, I think, <laughs> which is crazy late for me. <laughs> all right. I'm going to trim, cross-cut these. That was my interlude rant while I, uh, while I cut. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to, nice to just chill for a little. I haven't had a beer in a long time, and I had beers both nights, like really good local IPA beers. It was fun. Uh, where are the Twin Cities? It is on, um, oh, is it Penn? Uh, no, I think it's Xerxes and eh, maybe not quite 50th, like Xerxes and eh, 54th maybe. But, oh gosh, it's so worth it. It's packed every single time. And it's fun to sit at the bar if you can, because then you can see the fire from the um, oven and all that. Okay, so I need two five and a half and two six and a half. All right. This is not a five and a half ruler. I'm going to need my... Six and a half ruler. We'll do the we'll do the six and a half first. But yeah, so 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 recommend it. Pizzeria Lola is what it's called. It's 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 little, but it's it's super popular. It's always packed there. But you never feel like rush, and it's just feels good. And pizza's excellent, and they have delicious salads and side sides, seasonal vegetable type stuff. Really really good food. We always go there when my parents come in too, because they uh, they have a pizza oven. My parents and so they always go there and get ideas, <laughs> and they always ask questions and like, what kind of flour are you using? Oh, why are you why are you holding it like that or tossing it like that or why aren't you using more oil? Oh, because this is this, this. It's just kind of fun. All right, here are two six and a half inch strips. All right, we'll soon get done all with all this cutting. How are we doing on time? Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna. I'm gonna finish this no matter what tonight, guys. It's getting done, this block. So we can start birdies. All right. Snip the end. But yeah, two good restaurant nights. I haven't done that in a while. And two good beer nights, too. <laughs> and we have just tons of leftovers now. I don't know, we're, my husband and I are both on the, like, let's eat good food that we've made ourselves again. We're feeling, we're feeling the pizza and we're feeling the, all the breads and all that today, that's for sure. We're ready to, ready to get healthy again. All right, two five and a half ones.
all that whole 30 stuff that's sort of no gluten I think is I think that's been one of our big problems is we need to cut out gluten from our diets it's just making us achy and uh, like we just don't feel good and we just feel lethargic and um, I think it's from the gluten all right cut pieces yay all right what is next here this is the wrong page so let's throw that guy in the middle oh that's gonna be fun bordery let's see what this looks like now so that will kind of cut in right there like that okay yay yeah I don't know I mean we can eat we can eat all that stuff just fine we just feel a lot better without it yeah we've done it for a little while so we're kind of we're used to it in a sense we just have to our problem is that um we eat really good breakfast and then after that it goes downhill from there um yeah i mean it's actually really really helped us to not have a lot of gluten but you know then we'll go on some binge again like you know we just had pizza a couple times since easter i think we've had pizza out four times which is so much for us and um you know really good sandwiches and all that so now now we're feeling we're feeling that binge now and we got to go back to our normal thing which is barely any barely any gluten um i feel better yep so we're that's what we're doing so we're cutting out sugar and and uh, gluten and we found that that has really made a difference for us i mean we, we have so much energy during the day again this is I'm like i'm staring at the wrong page again this is the same page oh i did have the right page earlier it looked like I'm yapping. This is what we need. Okay. We sew the five and a halfs to the sides and then the six and a halfs to the top and bottom. And at that point, it should measure six and a half. And then we sew the edge on. Okay. The stitch and flip. So that, that I think is just sewing along the diagonal, I'm thinking. So that will be last. Okay, where are the short ends and where are the long ends? Let's get that established first. Oh, and let's get this in the right direction. That'd be good. Okay, so we have this guy. And so now I'm, I'm not going to, I have no points to worry about. That's nice. Oh, this is a six inch one. This looks like a six inch one. And here is our five incher. Ooh, that's pretty. I like how this one it has a lot of stuff going on and this one doesn't so much. Maybe we'll do it opposite there like like that. So then it's kind of like green up there and green up here. I like these little white flowers there too. Okay, let's sew the sides and the top and the bottom. Let's get her done. Oops, I keep hitting the tripod. Alrighty. I am staying up to finish this one tonight. There's a big so show in Denver today. Oh fun. Oh you found flatter. Oh they didn't have fig. I haven't tried the other the other flavors. You'll have to let me know how um what uh, what one did you get? Or did you get one? Uh if you did let me know what flavor and if you like it. Oh you didn't get one. Maybe they don't make the fig anymore. I have no idea. It's been a while since I since I got mine. Like a few years, I think. All right, my stitching accuracy is going all over the place again. I'm, I'm just wiggling too much. Missouri Star has fig. Oh, cool. You sell that through Australia. What is flatter? So flatter is this um, non-starch starch. It says, um, a vape oh wait that's the french let's go to oh wait oh yeah so a starch free i don't know if you can see a starch free smoothing spray and i've never used it before um yeah i know it's fig i, I don't know if it really smells like a real fig uh but it's kind of like this starch and i've been spraying it in the last couple blocks actually the last two blocks this block and the block before um just to stiffen up the fabric a little and and in the hope that it's uh, gonna help my accuracy yeah I, I don't know if it really is like best press has been recommended um, a lot by you guys here and I haven't tried it yet it's I gotta put it on my Amazon list I'm gonna I'm gonna get some to try that out too I just happen to have this and I hadn't used it before 
and it does feel like it's putting like some stiffness in there. Yes. Okay. So yes, it is similar to best press. Okay, good. That's what I'm figuring. I just don't know firsthand. But yeah, it, it smells so delicious though. And that's been fun. And now whenever I iron it, my iron smells good. So we really, if I was going for the whole accuracy thing, uh, I, uh, I should have trimmed this block every single time, trimmed it down with the ruler. The yuzu, I think I brought, I think I got some of that for my mom, the yuzu flavor, but I can't quite place in my head what that smells like. Uh, I have no idea actually what the price point of this is. My guess is it's more expensive just because it's, you know, they're playing up the good smell and, and you know, it's, it's pretty and usually when it's pretty, it's more expensive. So I, I don't know. I'll have to look into that though, because I do want to, I do want to try the best press too. Just do a little comparison. Wow, this is getting messy. This this guy. Flatter was more. Yeah, I'm guessing that's probably the case. Can't pick up the scissors. All right. All right. Let's press this, and we will um, move on. On to the top and bottom. All right, scoot you guys over. I suppose I can just aim you guys up that way. How about that? There we go. Best press works a bit better, but flatter smells so good. Yeah, I'm guessing. I think best press. That's actually starch, right? Um, I think this flatter isn't really a starch. I used best press on a baby quilt, and expanded father thought it quilt was too oh too stiff for the baby. Is that what it? Is that what you said? I, I missed the last bit. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, why I never used starch before. Like, I know people kept talking about it and all that, but, like, you're putting something on your your fabric, you know? And that kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to... That's what freaks me out about the glue, too, actually. The whole glue, the glue thing. So, so rinse soap for knitters. Oh, yeah, yeah. So... They have a bunch of different project products, and they they sell to like lingerie sort of shops and that sort of thing too. Um, but I don't know. I I'm, I'm still freaked out about the idea of spraying stuff on fabric. Um, so I don't know if this starch thing will be a common thing for me. How do you see the comments? How do I personally like? Do you see the comments? I mean. I, I think I see them the same as you. I, I just see my video playing and then the comments pop up in the bottom bottom left. Or are you wondering my, where my camera is? I guess I'm not quite sure what your what your question is. Um, this is kind of looking fun. Oh yeah, so I have my phone on a tripod, um, but the tripod's going horizontally. Um, so I have it attached to a guitar stand and then it's going out horizontally. So I have my space underneath here to work. Um, versus having the tripod right here. Use two cameras. Oh no, I am my uh, my face or the camera. The phone is in between my face and this work area here. Here, I'll just show you guys really quick. I can easily pull it off the stand here. So here's my here's my stand. I got the old guitar stand, and then uh, this is coming off the side, and my phone clips into it. And uh, so my my face is above it. So my face. My face is right here, and then this gets clipped underneath my face, and then I still have this this work area right here. And that's been working. Oh yeah, no problem. That's been working well so far. Uh, I can't get too much higher than I am now, because otherwise I can't see the comments anymore. But at some point, um, maybe I'll uh, do a little higher thing, and or if I have other people here working and. Um, like a group scope or something, then maybe I'll figure out a different way of doing it. But so far, this is fine. You watched a video on binding and she was glued it. Yeah, so that's on my list of things to try during the Splendid Sampler is the glue binding. That again freaks me out. Just kind of how starch freaks me out because you're putting, you're putting a substance on the fabric and I don't, I don't know. Or glue-based, that's what I meant, not, not bind. Um, but we're going to try it. 
I do think that this this uh, starching has definitely upped the accuracy game for sure. Yeah, that's true. It washes out. So that's that's definitely on the list. So we will for sure before the end of this the splendid sampler, uh, which is a while from now, we'll for sure do the glue basting. I've seen people use a desktop or iPad. Yeah, and, and read the comments. So I might try something like that. And I have a better device now uh, for that I'm doing it right now. Uh, I got a, first is my old one. So now I can use my, my normal phone as like the secondary thing, I think. But uh, I don't need it though right now because I can, I can, um, I can see you guys just fine. Yeah, you may not wash this quilt. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering that too because there's a lot of delicate, there's gonna be a lot of delicate handwork on it. My husband asked how big it was going to be today, and I'm like, well, if you put them right next to each other, it'll be 60 inches, but if I add sashing and a border, it could end up being queen size. And uh, um, and he got excited about that, so I think he kind of wants this to be our normal bed, uh, bed quilt. Even though I have the jean quilt, I don't know if you guys have been with me for a while, you know about the jean quilt. We'll finish that sometime this year too, I'm hoping. Um, I just have to quilt it. It's all pinned and basted and it just needs to be, just needs to be quilted. I need to figure out how I want to do that yet though. Um, but that's supposed to be for the bed. So I don't know, it's going to be a battle between the splendid sampler and the jean quilt for, for the bed, I think. Or we'll have two, we'll have two queen uh, queen quilts that we can just trade off or something. <laughs> but he seemed to want it for, for the bed, so I'm kind of excited about that. So that means we will, if that's the case, then, oh, that's true, winter versus summer. Um, if that's the case, then we will definitely be adding a border and sashing, and I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do that. Um, but if we, oh, I suppose I wouldn't have to add sashing, I could just do a bigger border. But I think I think I might want sashing once we're done here. And if you guys don't know what sashing is, that's just uh, like a little border. It's like interior borders, so like borders around each block. Just to it, it helps frame each block, so you can see each block stand alone a little bit better. So I don't know. We'll see. But he seemed interested in that. I'm nervous about the quilting. You know what? I am too. <laughs> I am. I don't do. I mean, all I do. I, I. I've never sent out a quilt before, and I. I've only. I. I don't. You know what? We should practice the whole um, machine quilting at home um, sort of thing during this too. But I'm not good at that in any fashion. So I, I do a lot of just straight line. I actually do a lot of hand tied stuff, but I'm not sure this would really um, look good for the hand ties. All right, guys, now we're just putting on these corners. So here, for accuracy's sake, you would normally uh, draw a line here. I think I'm gonna say screw that and I'm gonna stitch right through it. However, I do think I'm gonna mark mark that um, there's a corner that we want to hit, right? So let's see how, what's the best way of doing that? This is the corner I think we want to hit and clear, I know I'm putting this in backwards, but I'll just line it up there. And now I'm going to just put a pin on the other side and take that one out. I don't know. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. Okay. I'm going to go at an angle right there. All right. Right at that point, I have to hit. You know what? I might do that for all four corners right away. Because might as well get her done, right? Okay, so again, we want it right at that point where the seams meet. Here, let's see if I can get in focus. Yeah, see, so I'm just putting a pin right through those and flipping it around. And then just throwing a pin there to mark it and to hold it together. 
Man, my fingernail polish is just coming off like crazy. That's the other thing. I think, um... Oh, I broke my all my nails bowling, too. But I think, I think all the gluten has kind of made my nails, um brittle all of a sudden like because they all, all of a sudden like the past few days they've just felt super brittle oh you didn't add the corners i'm kind of excited about the corners got this fun fun little thing oh let's do it let's do it so we have those flowers in there that'll be pretty although the two the two borders are pretty cute too all right let's go through that corner again oops Dab. All right, and another pin. I keep singing Beyonce. <laughs> if you like, you should put a, a pin in it. Nice. If you like, you should put a pin in it. <laughs> okay. There we go. And this one. I like all these little, I like all these little flowers. We'll get those on the outside. fabric suck all the moisture oh that's interesting well that's weird because i haven't been doing any of the fabric for the past two days and it's been the past two days that um we've been eating really bad and uh and i haven't been touching the fabric okay putting the pin right there where i need to aim for and there we go okay now we should be good to go um Let's see, I am gonna have to use the starter and the ender each time, so this will take a little bit, but but it's gonna be exciting! Last bits of sewing. Okay. So, <laughs> this is where the line would help, but I'm gonna just aim. Let's see if we can get you guys in focus here. I'm gonna aim for, first I'm gonna aim for that point, and then we'll aim for, uh, the end here. Okay, so first to this point. We'll just use this as a like a rule. All right, let's move that pin. All right, and then I'm aiming to there. Wow, that felt pretty straight to me. <laughs> Usually I, I, I feel like it wiggles around quite a bit. So let's snip, snip this guy off. So we can check how we did there. Aha, so that's a pretty good looking point, people. Yeah, it's probably faster to just draw a line, but oh uh, well. I'm just trying to really get that point, so I need that pin anyway. So that looks good. Why do you use that piece at the end? Oh, it's it's um called a leader, I think is what what we found out. Um, there's two reasons that I'm you know, and who knows if this is truly the case, but I think it helps stop push the thread or the um my tip. Sometimes this gets pushed into my machine. And this helps balance it out. It also helps the presser foot be at the same level as this fabric. Because this is two layers of fabric and this is two layers of fabric. So it's an easier bridge for that presser foot to make. It doesn't have to go up on itself um, to start the stitches. And that that helps. So um, I was having problems with it being pushed into my machine earlier um, at the start of this. And that was apparently a solution for that. So I've just been doing it. All right, I aimed for that first point again. I think we might be going a hair crooked on this one, but that's okay. So it's just, um, this is just two pieces of fabric from a scrap that we were working on. And again at the end, just to kind of jump to the same level. All right, well that got very funny, let's just... There we go. 
All right, two more. Let's get my magnetic guy over here. If you guys don't have a magnetic, um, a magnetic pin holder, I totally recommend it because if you just have pins around like that, you just scoop them up and they're all good to go. They're kind of awesome. Those pin cushions. Okay. All right, aiming for this point. All right, out of there, pin. And now aiming for my end point. All right, just one more, and then we will press it and trim, and we will be done. Oh, you know what? I didn't measure. I didn't measure the block before I sewed these triangles on, so we might be a little goofy, but oh well. I think it'll be okay. All right, here's our last guy here. All right, aiming for here. Let's get this ender around, or this, uh, we started calling them enders and, and starters or something, but then someone said it's called a leader, and that makes sense. Oh, your battery's dying. Can't wait to see the finished block. Oh, good night, LaShonda. Thanks so much for coming in again. Yep, watching these periscopes definitely sucks up battery life. All right, let's press, and let's take a look at it. Hoo-wee, this is, um, this block was quite the, uh, challenge for us here. Um, I'm excited that it's close to being done. There we go. So I'm going to use, this is what my, my mom taught me this, I'm going to use, I'm not going to trim this right away because we're going to trim all this off, um, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to use this as my guide for when I'm pressing. Then I, you know, I won't wiggle it around. It'll, it'll be more square, I think. So mom taught me that. Oh, my parents, by the way, they're, they're using their Airstream. I think it's the maiden voyage for, for this year. Um, and they just got it at the end of the season last year. Mom posted a pic on Facebook today that they had a huge dent in the top of it. So their brand new Airstream, they got a huge dent in it. And it's because they hit a morning dove on the highway. Like it was just flying too low and it, and it hit it. And it put like this gigantic dent in the airstream. So they're sad. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna be able to get it out or anything either. But that was the airstream drama. I know. And it's new. They just got it, and it's all like custom and stuff. And huge dent in the top now. Oh, that's the most depressing start on the vacation. I know, right? They're going on Route 66, <laughs> driving along, along there, all the way to Arizona to see friends. All right, so here we are. I just need to trim these and then we're done, but we'll be able to see what it looks like. I'm gonna really flatten it out right now. Oh, it's looking fun. All right, let's check it out here. So here we go! It is just about done. So it's kind of fun to bring in some of this yellow again. Yeah, I hope they can get it fixed too. It's a pretty sizable dent. I mean, it'll have to be sucked out and pounded out. So let's let's finish it up for real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna trim trim these little ends off. We'll leave a pretty big seam allowance there. Look, we have this tiny little patched thing. That'd be cute sewn together. Oh, thanks so much! Yeah, this one uh, this one was tough. Like, if you watch some of the earlier videos and stuff, I mean, whew, we worked hard on this one. Some of the fabrics were not playing nice, um, but we worked through it, and, <laughs> and we're finally done. So I'm, I'm pretty excited, and I, I really love how it turned out. It, it's a pile of crazy, and, and I think that's 
just kind of really fun. So here we go, last little bit, and we are done. Yay, block uh, 13. It was confusing, but worth it, yeah. It definitely was, um, it wasn't even so much confusing as just a lot. So, I mean, I, I'll flip this around and I'll show you how big it is because it's kind of nice to see it with a human by it. Um, these blocks are really, really small. I like how subtle this white is against this, uh, you know, this is white and black, but it gives a sense of like a medium gray if you squint. Like if you squint, you can really, this white really pops and it's just kind of fun. It's subtle and kind of crazy and I don't know, it was fun. I'm glad, I'm glad we did it. Glad we stuck with it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to flip you guys around. You see it? Oh, cool. That's awesome. Thanks. All right. <laughs> hey there again, guys. So yeah, so this is how big it is. I mean, look, it is teeny. Teeny, teeny, teeny. <laughs> uh, but I'm excited. So yay! Well, uh, tomorrow we'll start the, the seagulls. Um, so thanks again, guys, for being here. I do appreciate it. It's so nice to be back. Uh, and I will see you guys again tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, yeah, it'll be Saturday. Man, today's the end of the week already. Sheesh. Oh, thank you, Janella. And I'm so happy your package got you. That's the, got there. That's awesome. I love hearing that. Okay. Good night, guys. Love seeing you guys again. Good night. <laughs>